Welcome back to Sniff Mavericks, <laughs> part 37. Welcome back to a uh, game that nobody's ever heard of before. Which means that uh, Alonzo, Alonzo, did we what's start? your history with this game? Are we yes, starting? Yes, we started, Alonzo. Did, did we start? <laughs> Should I hit record? Yes, we started. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Are, are we recording? For real, for real? Are we yes, recording, we are, Mikey? Are we recording we are right now? Recording. I can see the square. The stop sign on the thingy. It's recording, Alonzo. This is a fantastic for real, for real? opening. I know, that's, that's the bit. <laughs> it's already yeah, going to be hard enough to market it, this one to our audience of Switch, Nintendo Switch owning uh, Gen Zers and Millennials. If it was Mikey, you'd leave it all in. All right. If it was Mike, you leave it all in. All right, we're going to play Alicia, Dra Alicia Dragoon, which is a game that nobody ever played of, but it's a uh, underrated Genesis game. <laughs> that reminds me of one of our... Uh, I'll let you read this. Once again, the Silver Star fell from the sky, unleashing evil and destruction for the second time. The one oh. person who can save the world must seek out this object. Is this a sequel to Mega Man 8? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. It came out before Mega Man 8. Also, that story doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's expanded upon further in the manual and a, in a couple of cutscenes of the Expe game. But, uh, this is expanded is upon really further in the manga that this game is based on. Yes, but unfortunately, I don't know if it was based on anything. No, but you know yeah, what? I'm not seeing anything. The artist, uh, I'm not seeing much by the artist. Uh, the artist is Masa Toshi Azumi. Uh, if you paid attention to the opening, you'll notice that Gainax worked on this game. They did, uh, apparently the anime... I don't know exactly what the role was, but I'd imagine it had to do with, uh, the art direction and Probably, the, yeah. uh, animations. Because, um, the graphics in this game are fantastic. And you'll see that, like, as far as Genesis games that were coming out in 92, this is, uh, really cut above the rest. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing developer Game Arts? What happened to them? Yeah, Game Arts, Game Arts collaborated with Gainax for this game. But um, nobody ever knows, nobody ever talks about this game. Oh, Alonzo, check out that dithering in between the trees. Ooh, ditherific. <laughs> um, this is one of those games where you just take constant hits, but there's lots of health drops, mm -hmm. and your health bar is gigantic, so you just hear her scream indefinitely. I, I like how there's just a little gremlin flying behind you the whole game. Um, you'll... We're only at the beginning, but you'll see more about that later. Pro tip, here are some uh, goodies up here. I'm actually going to switch... You can switch your little familiar. Oh, okay. Oh, that so is I usually such go with a the Genesis Salamander. sound effect right there. I feel like that's in Sonic sure 3. Is. That exact sound. Uh, this game came up before, sound of, before Sonic 3. This game does sound a little bit more abrasive uh, than other Japanese sounding games, but I like how um here's another secret. This yeah, I like how um I told Ethan, not, oh yeah, I really like the Sonic Spinball soundtrack, and Ethan was aghast because it was like sounds like the last thing I'd I'd like. Pretty much, Ethan edited in the pause music sound from <laughs> that song is Sonic great. Spinball. <laughs> it sounds like an electric guitar being played with a taser. All right, pro tip: get That's extra so lives because this game has no continues. Oh shit! And you and you and you start with one life. Hey, do you know what the plot of this game is? Why don't you tell us, Alonzo? Because uh, <laughs> I thought it, it was is something about a meteor grasp. falling from space. No, it doesn't really explain it very well. From right, here's Wikipedia here, it's saying much of the backstory described in the manual. Elisa is a daughter of a sorcerer who attempted to stop the prince of all things evil, Baldor. As a child, her father was tortured to death in front of her eyes by Baldor. Okay, so basic anime hero intro. Yeah, Although the world has it's... not been fully recovered from devastating effects, Baldor's last visit, uh, Baldur's aide Orna manages to transport his dormant cocoon back to Earth. Now a woman with magical ability rivaling that of her father, Elisa sets out to destroy Baldur's yeah. cocoon pause, before pause he can for, awaken. Uh, story time. Uh, that was it. Oh, there's dialogue? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, really? This is basically the prologue level. Why does he look like he's a mech? You have done well to come so far. <laughs> 
but you are too late. You look I like he's a mecha Baldor. character. He's like he's wearing suit kind of. of. Our leader has returned to us. Okay, so I assume that's Baldor's A, but. Yes, and this Baldor's is. You have seen what power we possess. Orna. Dare to challenge us? Travel to our palace if you think you can survive the journey. And that's like one of two lines of dialogue in the whole game. But that was basically the prologue level. So basically you're you're trying to chase after that guy to avenge your village or whatever. And you're Alicia Dragoon. Your daughter of a super big, good big time sorceress. Sorcerer. That you watched torture to death in front of your eyes. Exactly. Are you saying that the sorcerer was tortured? It looks like the it looks like the little yellow dragon man is trying to bite her leg. It looks like a little skeleton. Yeah, a little skullman. Mr. Skullman's is here to steal your spicy McChicken. Mikey is here to steal your spicy McChicken. They still have some right. McChickens, apparently, even though they also have something called a McDonald's chicken sandwich now. Yes, so it's two different sandwiches entirely. The McChicken's like a cheap little chicken patty. Yeah, it's basically like a big chicken nugget. But uh, the, like the chicken sandwich is like an actual like uh, like a real chicken breast. Okay. Like it's much higher quality, but it's also four times the price. So they're both really good. <laughs> I remember when we first met Ethan in freshman year. He was like, "It has been exactly twelve years." 13 months and 8 days since I last went to McDonald's. I mean, they taste good. It doesn't mean that I eat them freak. It doesn't mean that I eat them frequently because they're healthy for me. Uh-huh. Uh, like, I might have McDonald's, like, twice a year. So apparently, because this was Gynax, uh, they kind of haven't, like, from uh, what I can reading right now, they usually do, like, dating sims and stuff, so this is, like, the first, like, yeah. departure into, like, something a little more out there. And I didn't know that they since they games. worked on Nazca, the Valley of the Wind, which is like the one this um, one show movie. That was, was that because that that was uh, Studio Ghibli. Yes, and they they worked on uh, some of it. They yeah they they worked yes, on the, Miyazaki's film animated film, and they worked on that one. So you'll see a lot of the influence here with the tech. I was just about this. I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah, the tech and the, uh, the, the, the fantasy like melding together. That's why that dude was wearing all that mecha armor. Sure was. Okay. Do you see how he had like one thing on the side of his head? Oh yeah. shit! I thought that was just I already a leveled weird up. Little... I thought that was like a yeah. weird helmet thing. Mm -hmm. Well, well he looks he looks a lot like the bad guys from anime from late eighties, early nineties. <laughs> yeah. Kind of all look the same. Oh my! Oh my! That's early eighties. Oh, she's got the the the, an, the early anime's shoulder pads. That's awesome. She does. She does. Ethan edited in the Japanese box art. No. All right, and now now put in the American box no, art and see that. how much of a downgrade we got. It's so bad. The, Ethan did you see it? edited in yeah. a second one of those little yellow dragons so that it looks like one dragon is humping the other with its idle animation. Oh. It's too bad that I'm not using that one right now. <laughs> Now I'm using the, uh, I can't remember what this one's called. Like, what animal it's supposed to be. A griffin? Did I? That might be. <laughs> By the way, check out those jail bars, everyone. Those beautiful jail bars. Yeah, you can see bars. them really bad. You can see them pretty darn bad in this game. Yeah, Ethan needs to get his console triple bypassed. Alright, this boss is really super easy. I was gonna say, you already killed one of them. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. I did a practice playthrough this morning. That's good. There we go. There's <laughs> there's a sound effect in this that sounds like very similar to Super Mario RPG when you pick something on the menu. <laughs> Mikey missed it, but did you see it said, stage one clear, go to next. <laughs> oh, secret collect. <laughs> The That'd music in this game is pretty awesome. darn good, too. Here, this is what looks like Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. This level looks like one. 
Uh, you want to try to walk off the sides as often as you can because there are lots of little secrets. It's kind of like mm-hmm. DuckTales, if anybody's ever played DuckTales for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Woo! Mm-hmm. Or like, if, yeah. Uh, if you walk up to like the sides, you'll just like get extra things to spawn. This is the same way where like you walk off the branch, the uh, regular path, you'll get more shit. You'll get more shit. It shit, rewards shit. exploration. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you definitely want to explore the stage levels, but so does that laser home in on things? Or yes, it does. It? So it's an automatic. It's an automatic targeting laser. Okay. And uh, you can see my little power meter right up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's charging, and then it's going to oh, go up I to see. full. And it's flashing. So now, when I hit it, it attacks every enemy on the screen. Okay, so do you like hold the button down to charge it up, or do you like wait nope, until it, it fills it up? it charges automatically. Okay. But like the longer you hold the button, the yeah, more it goes. Yeah, that That's that's the Super Mario RPG menu sound. Which one is her going up? Yes. Oh, up there's a hidden life too. Her getting hit. That one. Yeah, that sound. <laughs> <laughs> they like Mario like this. Uh, Nintendo liked this game so much that they put the sound of her violently getting injured in the game as a menu sound effect. I, I'll send you a clip of some uh, menu sounds from Mario RPG, here's and a, you can edit here's another it hidden area right here. So uh, inevitably, Mikey will forget, and Ethan will not tell me to remind me before he uploads or I'll tell the video. I'll tell you this time you son of a bitch no <laughs> ignore it so we're we're recording this game right now because we decided to take a little break from sunshine um mm. but I just saw part seven come out uh-huh. <laughs> and you know, Ethan did not get me the footage of him sinking the ship in the bathtub on time <laughs> <for me. laughs> I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you are you saying that if that if I asked you, you would have built another tinfoil no, Titanic and sunk it? No, but the that you blamed it on that. It's not that you didn't even ask me. It's, <laughs> not like, it's like I wasn't even willing to do it in the first place, but you just blame it on saying, he just didn't get it to me on time. Mikey's going to like this thing. Oh my god, look at his face. Mikey likes everything. Mikey, he, yeah, he's pansexual after all. Yes, that means that I like little octopus gremlins with <laughs> it eyes. It doesn't look very little to me. Look oh. at the look at the graph. Look at the parallax in the back. Yeah, that is, the clouds moving around the trees. That is a neat effect. All right, so oh. what's what's preventing Alicia from just walking to the right and leaving this thing behind? Video game logic, Mikey. If you question game mechanics too much, okay, know. that's you not. A... She can't. She can't jump. See, she I can't mean, get over. Jumping is a mechanic. What you're talking about is video game invisible quirks. wall. It's or an as... invisible wall. Did you the guys ever play uh, the Simpsons game? Which one? Which, There's like 83 yeah. of them. The one that is literally called the Simpsons game. Is that for the 360 and PS3? And DS and we yes. No, I did not play that one. So there's I like a Bart's Nightmare for the Genesis. A game that we will not be playing for the show. Yeah, that's <laughs> with the whole nostalgia critic thing, that one's kinda cursed already. Uh, that and I've never been able to beat the game no matter how hard I try. The Simpsons game. What is Yeah, this? so the Simpsons game has like you know how how in games how you can like collect concept art or little secrets or something like that? Yeah. In, in that game, you collect video game cliches. Oh. Um. You know? <laughs> so like one of them is the invisible wall. Oh. Um. And, and every time it happens, comic book book guy pops up and he goes, "Worst video game cliche ever." That's pretty. That's pretty clever. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> All right. This is my favorite song in the game, but you don't hear it very long because this uh, level is really short. You're short. And you have to hear the engine sound. All right, the, the dragon's back. So now I want you to put that humping in the game and the video, Ethan. Why? Because it's funny. Like, it looks like he's humping the air. 
Oh, oh, now I get it. Now I see it. And I see it now. You have ruined now it. Now you can't unsee it. No, if I look away, I can't see it. <laughs> Damn it. It's really hard to avoid it in this game, to be honest. <laughs> T TB Dizzle. TBH. So it's kind of like a, it's an endless onslaught of stuff coming at you. You know what's um, interesting is uh, 